Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to put the front end back on this case. Uh, I wanted to do the differential next, but if you watched the previous show, the bushing they sent me was a little oversized on the bore and I didn't like that. I called them up and they said, no problem, we'll send you another one with no charge on the bushing and no charge for the shipping and he even threw in two dust covers for the um, right hand side of the machine for the older machines this one does not need one and uh, when we get to that point I'll show you what I mean we're gonna put the left hand fender back on to give the case a little strength because it's so stripped down to put that big front end on here now this if you can if you remember this bearing was fine was nothing wrong with it but if you look close <coughs> excuse me right here the <coughs> boy right here they have a lip seal pressed into the end of the bushing so you don't need that plastic thing they used to have years ago uh, there's one on my uh, model that they discontinued then they came out with a rubber um, well actually they didn't have anything I come up with the rubber dust cover with a different size seal and for the left side of the machine <clears throat> uh, but get a chance maybe I'll go over that again but I'll, I guess I'll wait till they come in so I can show you what they look like uh, I'm gonna order another seal so I can show you how to put them in there and how they fit on my model and I'll get rid of that stupid plastic thing but right now let's put this fender on so we can get the front end in there let's move the camera down okay we have four bolts that holds the fender to the rear case one of the bolts on this model is about an eighth of an inch longer than the other three that's because it has to go through this bracket that holds the mower deck so let's put this one on We'll put one of these on. Now we got to go through these wire clamps that hold the wires in place. Now it won't matter putting this on now because when I get the differential in I can hold the chain case in position and slide the axles and hex shaft right through the chain case and come out this bushing on this side. Let's tighten these up a little bit. kind of nice putting this back together I get some of these parts out of my way I've got parts everywhere for this thing now it holds this up the longer bolt goes through this wire clamp that's on the side goes through this bracket through the fender and into the rear case The other bolt that holds this up, you can move this a little bit, is on this brace that goes across from side to side that holds up the rest of your linkage. That goes on there. You know what I'm going to do before I put that together? I'm going to put some anti C's on them joints. Because there is no other way to lubricate those. 
So we'll slop it up with this stuff. Now this is NIC's lubricant. It's probably, I guess it's different than regular NIC's. In what respect, I don't know. Um, now one of these holes is punched and tapped for just another bolt. The top hole is just drilled so you got a nut and a bolt that goes through there. And that's all there is to that. We'll tighten these up. Believe me, I'm being very careful not to scratch any paint. It's like I said, this thing is only five years old. And I tell you, I was pretty hesitant on even taking it apart. But it was nice we did go through it because we did find some issues, some things that needed replacing. And uh, when we're done, this is going to be like a brand new machine. And I'm sure he's glad that he did it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it depends if I get it put together. Okay, here's the old pilot bushing. And you can see it's it's kind of worn. You put it on here. There's some slop to it. And we have a brand new one here in the bag. I love this. 90% 90, 90 of these parts, at least, all say made in the USA. Boy, I just love that. Now, if you can see, let me take this by hand and bring you up here. I'm probably going to bump something. But see the rust on this tube, especially right here? We want to get all that off. If you leave that rust on there, it's just going to rust that much quicker. I, I like to shine these all up, get all that off. And then I put on some of the NIC's lubricant to help that from uh, water from just sitting in there. You notice, look at the top of it, there's hardly any rust at all on it. All the rust is on the bottom, so when water does get in there, it just goes to the bottom and lays there and it can't get out. So we're going to shine that up, we're going to put that uh, NIC's lubricant on it, and we're going to put her together. What I use is I have an air, right angled air grinder with a wire brush on it. Now this was my brother-in-law's. He passed away a few years ago and my sister, surprised to me, called me up one day and she said, I got some stuff for you. I went over there and she gave me all of his tools. Uh, he worked in a General Motors in the tool and die shop and he had a lot of stuff and there was two or three of these in there It's a variable speed and uh, I use it sometimes for drilling holes in a tight corner because it's so short So I'm gonna shine this up. It's kind of loud. It might take two or three minutes So we're gonna pause this thing so you don't have to listen to this along with me so hang on. And this is all you have to do. Actually, that took less than a minute to shine that up. All the rust is gone, nice and smooth, just like brand new. So now we're going to smear a bunch of this stuff on there. <laughs> this is this stuff's worse than Permatex. <laughs> He'll have this stuff all over his pants. I know he will. <laughs> that's not that's not funny, is it? 
Well, I guess it depends whose pants it is. <laughs> Sorry, little humor. Get back at your boss day. So we just smear this up really good. Believe me, I don't don't feel bad, boss, because by the time I get this all put back together, I'm gonna have this stuff all over me too. You just can't work with this stuff without getting it on you. Oh yeah. That looks nice. Now we're going to try, let me turn this a little, we're going to try to get some down in this bore. I would spread it on the pilot bushing, but as you shove it in there, it's just going to wipe it all off and I'm going to have a big gobby mess up here. So we're going to try to get some down inside of here to keep this from rusting. And when we slide that bushing in, that will smear it the rest of the way down through this bore. Oh yeah, he'll love that. Now let me get a rag. Good lord, I got it on me already. Now I want to hold a rag down here in the bottom when I shove this thing through. Might be better to go from this side. It's more open. Well, not too bad. Not bad at all. Now, we'll get this thing stuck in here. Make sure I got it facing the right way. When I put it together last time, mine, I had it facing the wrong way, and I don't think anybody noticed. Wow, starting to look like something. Now in this box of parts here, I have a plate that goes up here and captures inside this clamp that keeps the tube in the proper adjustment for the belt. I took it apart this way instead of taking the clamp off the tube. Well, because one thing, once you loosen them clamps up and try to slide them, they're going to scratch that paint all up terrible. This way, I didn't have to disturb the paint or I didn't change the setting for the belt for the mower deck. Because this is how you adjust the belt for the mower deck to get it to right tension. And again, a lot of these bolts are threaded into the frame, and a lot of these frame members are pretty thin, so if you strip one out, 
don't worry about it. Just put a nut on the back side and tighten it up. No one's ever going to see it. So, the front end's in. Now, we got to rewire it. And we got to get that brake cable up through there. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, here's the end of the clutch pedal, and it looks like they had, by the kink in the cable, all the ferrules pulled through the, the pedal. So what we want to do is we got a wire here with a little hook on the bottom that will hook on the cable and it's small enough that the ferrules won't fall through. Now on this one, they crushed another one on the cable. So if you do lose them, they won't fall all the way down to the bottom. They'll stop right here at this one. They got crushed onto the cable. So that was kind of nice. So what we want to do first, we want to put the wire through this square hole. Because this is where the cable comes out of. Then we want to go through this slotted hole they have punched in the tube right here. We want to shove that all the way down and we'll make a hook in the top so it don't fall through to the bottom. It's down here somewhere as I just know it. Alright, we're going to hook this cable on and hope and pray that it comes out the first time. without pulling a wire with it. Now this is the fun part. You get it up to the top, you got to try to get it out the hole without losing it. And I'm going to have to get a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, that was a challenge. Um, it's easier if you have this extra little ferrule clamped to your cable let the rest of them fall down to it and just grab the head of the cable. It's a lot easier to pull it out. That took about three or four minutes to get to that. So I'm guessing they had all of them ferrules pulled through. You know, that's probably something I should have counted when I took it apart. But we can adjust the clutch later. What we want to do now is get this cable through the hole in the pedal guard. We'll stick all of them through for right now. And again, there's a keyhole shaped hole in the pedal. The ferrules go through the top, you slide it down and it locks them in. Then you can try to get this rubber back on here. These can sometimes be a problem if your machine is older and the rubber is stiff. This one's nice enough where it's going on a little better than some. good as others. Okay, I think we got it on there.
that's it for the cable. Now we'll go down and we'll try to get all the wires hooked back up for the ignition switch. Um, when you turn it to the off position, there's a kill wire, there's an on wire, and there'll be a start wire that goes to the solenoid. We've got to get them in position yet. And it looks like a ground wire. So I guess let's drop the camera down and put them on. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see because it's pretty tight quarters in here. But we have the red wire I labeled number one. That is for the safety switches they have on the machine as far as the shifter, the clutch has to be pushed in, the moor deck, they all got safeties on them. That's what that red wire is for. The blue wire goes to the solenoid. <clears throat> and I can't see it right now. Okay, I found that little bugger I was hiding from me. Now there's two wires up here. There's a white one and there's two white ones. Them go to the wire that's coming off the mower deck for the safety switch. So right now we just want to be concerned with these. I have a blue one here that plugs onto the solenoid. I have to go up this hole here, I guess. And there's a tab sticking out. It plugs right on there. That's a hot wire that comes from the switch that kicks the solenoid on and off. All that solenoid is, it's just a big heavy duty switch because the ignition switch won't hold the current that that starter pulls when you hit it. Okay, the next wire is a black wire. Should be here somewhere. That goes on the other side. I'll show you where that goes in a minute. Along with this green one. And I can't have that there. I have to unplug this. This has got to come up through this hole. And plug in in here. I don't want to see that when I get all the covers on. Now I'm going to spin this thing around. Now this is a little contact block right here that all your safety switches hook to and your kill wire. And if any of them close, it shuts the engine down. So we'll take this nut off. And it has a little built-in lock washer. And we'll put this wire back on here. Put that nut back on. And the last wire is our ground. That goes under the nut that holds the engine down to the rear case. Get that washer off. Get the wire on, the washer back on, and we'll get the nut back on. And that's it. Well, that's it. 
We have the front end assembly in, the new pilot bushing, <clears throat> the cables hooked back up, all the wiring's hooked up, except for them two plugs that this comes from the safety switch from the mower deck. That tells you the mower deck is not engaged while you're trying to start the engine. Next, we're going to be putting in the new bushings for the kingpins and getting the uh, linkages hooked up. So if you have any questions on this, please throw them in the description box below and I'll answer them in the same place so everybody can benefit from your questions and hopefully my answers. So uh, I guess don't forget to subscribe and until next time, work safe, have fun, and let's try to get this thing put back together. We'll talk to you soon.